All right, guys, and welcome on into episode three of the Play and Explain series. Uh, Stars is currently down at the moment, guys, so I decided to play some 8 25 and L today instead as an alternative. Um, I know I haven't put up a schedule yet this week, guys. Um, I've just been really, really busy with uh, doing this King's commentary the last three or four days, so hopefully I'll get the uh, schedule up and running by this evening. And if not this evening, then definitely at the latest tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon itself. Um, as I said, guys, just been very, very busy the last three or four days with um, doing this King's commentary. So only getting a chance to record this now. And this is probably the only chance I'm going to get to do it before I have to upload it on YouTube. So without further ado, guys, we're just going to jump straight into this 25 and L Zoom on uh, 8 at 8. Let's go. Getting like that, guys. Mark and Mark and Mark and Mark and all the time. All the time. Marking all the time. Probably going to start with a check here now with the ace three. I like going for an overbet on this turn now with the uh, ace three now. So we're going to do that. And we take it down. Bear got called there, guys. I probably would have given up the river, especially against that player profile, but going to get a lot of falls in that river regardless. Get a walk with the jacks. I've been heard, hearing some amazing things about this pool, guys. Don't know how accurate it is. Again, I don't I haven't played 25 in L Zoom or I don't grind it that often at all. Uh, obviously opening eights here. Obviously opening the threes too. Uh table two here is very good for our range overall. Probably gonna bet this some of the time, so I'm gonna go for it this time. Get called, that's fine. Gonna start with a check on the turn now. And I'm not gonna open that king nine this time. And I'm just gonna check for all the eights now versus that size and it's fine. Ace three opening. I'll be opening the queen six two. A uh, pretty small three bet here on table two, guys. But I'm still going to be folding because ace three just plays very very poorly in the formations. Even though this three bet sizing is smaller, just still going to let it go. Top of feature doesn't see appear to be working for whatever reason, but it's fine. Fold that jack 10. I don't know why this isn't topping up. Okay, it's there now. Hit the walk with the queen 10. I would have been open to this king 9 in the cutoff if it had folded around to me with a recreation in the big blind. It's a low frequency opening the cutoff of my ranges. Okay, still waiting for some spots, guys. Still waiting for some spots. Still waiting on some spots. Maybe defending the 7 8 at a frequency, but we're not going to be calling now once it's gone multi way. Maybe 3 back this ace queen in a moment. It's a 3 bet nut. We got 4 bet. It's going to be a very, very standard call. Bear in mind, guys, how quick he made this 4 bet. Ace queen is still going to be a very, very standard call here, regardless, but. Yeah, he smed a snap four bet here, so quite indicative of strength. So we are going to call anyways. We're probably never going to fold here now. Uh, once he checks the flop again, very, very quickly. I don't think he ever has ace king. I don't think he ever has aces here. So we're just going to start with a check back for a little bit of deception. And as I said, guys, we're not going to be folded if he decides to delay C bet here. Once he checks here now again, we're going to go for a small bet on the turn. Something like 20 to 30% here seems fine. We do get called. And I think we have a very, very clear jam on the river here, guys, with ace-queen. Um, again, indicative of how quick he's acting here. I just think he has, like, kings or something like that. If he has ace-king or some slow-played aces here, guys, then well played by him. But, yeah. Just time and tells again there, guys. Just, like, ridiculous the fact that he's acting that quickly. Just no need to do it. Just take your time. Don't paint the picture of how, how easy it is your hand is just to check fold there. 
Like he snap four bit pre flop, snap check the flop, snap check the turn. Like obviously he just has like some queens, kings or something like that usually. Uh, ace queen as well. We're going to be four betting here on table two on this roll. We're going to go for a four bet. We get called. Uh, this is going to be a very easy bet bet jam on this board texture, guys. Very, very easy bet bet jam with this combo in particular. So it might just start with a small bet of like 7.8 here. Seems good. Get called. And as I said, guys, we're just going to stay betting. Bet, bet, jam here is what the uh, aim of the game is going to be. Very, very good board for our range. Very, very good board for our range. He will have some some hands here as well, but I don't really care. I'm just bet, bet, jamming this. Yeah. Good luck us here, guys. If we're not bluffing this, guys, we're not bluffing enough here. He can still have some jack 10. He can still have some 9 tail. He can still have some 8, 9 potentially. And if he has a better hand here, then so be it. Okay. Well, jacks is a good hand. And by the way, guys, jacks just get that in pre, so... Kind of a pretty good example there. Somebody who's just a nit there. Probably a weaker player. Fish. Whatever the case may be. I'm still happy with my, my, with my bluff though. Very, very happy with it. Like he just has the easiest call down in the world there. But as I said, he shouldn't have... Um, he shouldn't have jacks there ever. Ever he should have jacks. But anyways. I uh, got to check behind the ace-queen here this time as well. I'm going to fold the ace-9. And I'm just going to check back the turn again with the ace-queen. I'm just happy enough to check it down. Okay, beat king-jack, that's fine. Ace is opening here. And just going back to that ace-queen bluff as well, guys. Don't be annoyed with yourself that that didn't work. Like, you have to understand how good that board is for your four-bet range. It's just like an easy barrel off with that combo in particular. Really easy barrel off there. And the thing is, guys, just because we got called there with a the bluff doesn't mean we're never going to have value there, you know? Just, it is what it is. As I said, he should never have jacks there. Should never, ever have jacks there. He will have, like, um, some, like, pocket nines as well. At a frequency, he might have king jack. He's going to have queen ten suited. But as I said, guys, just because he has all them strong hands doesn't mean we never uh, have value ourselves. So... Don't be too annoyed over that. Ace Queen here, we're four betting in these formations. Pretty high frequency, if not pure. All right, take it down, bro. This guy's running hot. Running very, very hot. King Jack opening here. Feeling like that guy's want to mark this guy. Going to be three betting this ace five as well versus two point five. But I just realised that this guy is a recreational, so we're just going to be calling instead. In saying that, if this guy was deeper, would still be three betting this because again of the post flop uh, exploits against these profiles. And I think I just like trying to raise get this in most of the time against this profile again. So we're going to go for a check raise, get called, and I think I'm just going to jam the turn here, try and get folds from some king jack, maybe some ace jack that he might have. And if we get called here, we're never in worse shape. Or in that in, in, in the worst case scenario, we still have equity. We do get called by ace ten. Okay. Checking back the ace king here this time. Checking back the ace king here this time, and I'm gonna check back again. And probably my call a river bet against this profile. And I'm going to try and see what happens. And that's okay, that's a straight, it's fine. Again, like that, guys, I don't care about losing money when I have sem when I have equity. And when I know I can get falls a lot of the time. And that's what I'm saying, guys. This is off to a bad start. I said when I do these recordings, it's just going to be freelance. It's just going to be whatever comes up, comes up. And it's nice that these spots come up where bluffs don't work out always. Because you know I'm an aggressive player, guys. You know I'm going to barrel off with all my bluffs and all that jazz. So, as I said, I just don't be annoyed when they don't work out, man. Because you're going to come across stents of hands where... You know, bluffs don't work for 10, 15, 20 hands in a row. You're down 10, 15 stacks because of it. Now what are you going to do? Just don't don't get caught up in the middle of it, guys. Just play a good poker. Play Just bluff hands, call hands. It is what it is. The, the, the sooner you stop caring about hands that happened 5, 10 minutes ago, guys, the easier life will become. And that's just a fact.
Like, if this happened to me on 500 nil, this starts, whatever, 15, 10, 15 minutes into this session, I, I, I really wouldn't care. I should have called the Queen 6 as well versus the Min Open. Aces. Hopefully we get some action with Aces. We get called by a recreation, which is reassuring. It's going to start with a small bet against this profile, guys. And now we're going to check on the turn. And I'm going for a big bet on this river. Like, if he ever has a king here or some queen X or jack, or maybe queen X or king X, he's definitely going to call this river. But I say, when he checks back the turn that quickly, maybe not that strong of a hand, but still going to overbet this river. And I'm going to isolate this recreational here on table one as well when he limp, limps from the small blinds. He does call. I'm going to check back this board. But once he leads here, my decision's very easy, guys. Just fold. Very, very easy fold. It's, it's nice that this recording is happening this way. In terms of having this start like that. It's good for you guys to realise how you stay composed. When you might not get off to a good start. But because I'm probably down a buy-in or two from the get-go. Which again, I don't care. It's 25 and L guys. If this happened to be on 500 and L, I'd have the same perspective. Buy-ins are buy-ins. Big blinds are big blinds. It doesn't matter. We'll do the exact same thing in all the hands I've played so far. Whether it was 200, 500, 100, 50 and L, you name it. Uh, Queen Fiver is going to be calling here. Blind feet blind. This is ridiculous sizing by him in position, but whatever. Uh, i got to check back the Queen Five here this time too. And open the twos here. And I'm going to have to fold on that turn now. It's fine. Usually as a default, guys, when people call call from the small blinds like this, I probably treat them like a recreational for the most part. as a default strategy, so I'm going to start with a range bet. Going to check this behind on the turn now. And I'm going to try and turn this into a bluff on the river. I don't think twos is that much showdown value at this point, guys. So I am going to try and turn this into a bluff now. So good luck goes for an overbet. Opening the ace-king on table two. We take it down with the twos. Happy days. Again like that, guys. Attack that node. Especially when you have a hand that doesn't have that much showdown value. Whereas twos probably didn't when the out of position player check calls that flop. To turn that into a bluff is going to be a good play. Turning that into a bluff is going to be a good play. The fall is three two versus two point five. King six, we're going to fold. Six five, we're obviously going to open. Fold the fours. Fold that also. Fold that also. Ace ten of diamonds. Just going to be calling if this guy opens in the small blind, guys. Mr. Ty Spaz. Just a standard call here, guys. Queen Jack, off suit, blind be blind. So we're just going to call. Flap at the top pair. And like that, guys, not always betting this. Going to check it back this time in a monotone texture. So we're going to do that. Sad turn, but not going to be falling if he bets just yet. He starts with a three quarters bet. We're going to call one. And if he follows through on the river, we're going to fold. If he uh, gives up on the river, then obviously going to check back. Yeah, happy enough to check in this back. The thing is, I might end up turning this into a bluff now once he checks. 
just to maybe try and get some folds from like hands that he just took a stab with on the turn that I might end up taking on the pot now myself. Yeah, just, he just took a stab in the turn there. So I floated, took it down once he checks the river there. Could check that back, but if there's an option to take down the pot like that, guys, where, you know, you're going to be chopping most of the time, or even in some cases losing, then, you know, go for it. I mean, that was a good example of um, turning something like that into a bluff. I think, anyways. Uh, going to be defend defending this 10-7, excuse me, versus 2.5. I'm for sure going to be check calling the flop. Versus the vast majority of sizes, I'd say. Calling the 10-7. We're going to have to call the turn as well, I think. Unless he goes for a massive bet. Yeah, still have to call versus pot, I'd say, but it's getting a lot closer. He still has some bluffs here, like queen-10, king-queen. Stuff like that, you know. And plus, this will be under bluff by the river, guys. So I don't mind overcalling here potentially on the river. Or sorry, on the turn to, you know, potentially just people are just not going to bluff the river enough. Yeah. And my read was right in the turn, but what are you going to do? It's fine. Just uh, lose another pot, I guess. But either way, happy enough with that. Happy happy enough with the uh, the turn play, with the call. As I said, guys, it's going to be one of those things where people still have enough bluffs there where you still kind of have to call turn. But on the river, definitely going to be overfalling versus another bet. History obviously opening. Uh, starting with a small bet here, this time with the King Jack. Good call there. Flop a flush here on table two, which is nice. I'm just going to start with a small bet versus this profile. And Jax is kind of close here, but I do like betting here again for half pot sizing. Let me take it down. Just check into this player now, guys. I'm sure you know the story at this stage. So we're just going to check. And open that. Unfortunately, he doesn't, uh, doesn't bet himself, but we are going to go for a big bet on this river now for an overbet, I think. So that's what we're going to do. I think when he doesn't stab the turn, I think he's a lot of like 9x and maybe king x that would have called the flop, and that's exactly it, yeah. Um, the thing is with this profile, they're going to obviously bluff their hands on the turn a lot. Yeah, I need 9-10. Um, still a tad bit of an ambitious call on the river, I guess, but can see the benefits to it. Um, but either way, yeah, I do think when population like that, or not population as a whole, that rake, that sorry, that fish profile are going to obviously over bluff like crazy on the turn. So I think with the check back, they have a lot of showdown value hands and, uh, that's more or less kind of what happened there with the 9-10. Although I'd still probably fold in his shoes, but, you know, recreations are going to be pretty inelastic in a lot of nodes, guys. Fold the 10-9 there. Going to be 3-betting this 5-6 a decent amount of the time as well versus the button here when we're in the big blind. If this guy wants to hurry on, if he knew I was doing a recording, I'm sure he would have folded ages ago. I want to try and give you guys as much content as I can, you know. So yeah, I'm going to be 3-betting the 5-6 this time, and we will be calling a 4-bet as long as the 4-bet size is close to what I think is optimal. So as I said, 3-betting the 5-6. So he should be making this like 27, 28 in terms of a 4-bet sizing, if he was to do it. But he just falls, and that's fine as well. Ace-9 opening. Fold the ace-9 there on table 2, excuse me. Uh, mix, mix bet and check here on the flop, guys. Probably going to start with a bet this time with the ace of clubs. Again, I wouldn't be betting this full frequency, but... Definitely betting it this time. Small sizing on this board seems fine. Get called. Opening the kings here. Let me take it down. Uh, I'm going to go for an overbet on the turn here with ace-9. Um, having the ace of clubs here is very, very relevant. Plus, I want to get folds from stuff like 2x, 3x, and any pairs between 4s through 6s here. So that's what I'm targeting. 
Again, like that, guys, there's a couple of rivers we can follow through on. Any club, possibly any four, any eight, any jack is another one too. So all very, very reasonable hands. We're going to give up on this river now. Going to give up on this river. <laughs> and we're actually ahead of that hand. <laughs> Funny stuff. Yeah, club would, club would have been a bad river, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, checking back once he calls that turn on that river, just um, pretty, pretty, pretty bad river to uh, to bluff there on on the on the on the, on the board pair. Fold the five two this time, and again like that, guys. This guy is probably a recreational call calling from the small blinds, and against recreationals, see that range here as a whole is going to be a good play on the vast majority of boards. I mean. And I'm just going to stay betting this on the turn now for a half pot size on. And I'm going to jam the river, obviously, guys. It's a good look us on table one. I imagine we have the best hand here the vast majority of the time, if not all the time. So, yeah. And he has king, queen. It's unfortunate, bro. Unlucky. Next hand. Might be recouping some of the losses, guys, eh? <laughs> Might be recouping some of the losses. Opening the Queen Jack. All that. Another 20, 25 minutes or so. 23, 24 minutes of a recording to do. Guy appears to be a recreational too. Or a broken stack at least. King Jack, we're just going to call this time. Versus the button. And we will be check calling one in the flop versus normal sizings, I guess. Queen four just calling here as well. For sure calling versus this sizing. For sure. Um gonna go for a stab here for half pot with Queen Four this time. And as I said, we're definitely calling the uh, King Jack for a small sizing. Gonna check this back on the turn, take a stab on the river. And once this goes check, check on the turn here, guys, I think this uh, King Jack can go for a value bet on the river. Um, checking back to Queen 4, as I said. And if he checks this river, we're gonna try and bluff. I think I like going for an overbet sizing here when he checks that river that quickly. So I am gonna go for an overbet sizing with the Queen 4. Yeah, take it down. We take it down there as well. Uh, I really like overbetting that turn, or sorry, that river with the queen four because, again, time and tell, given how fast he checked, he never has a flush and probably never has a straight. So, um, capped range there where we can still be checking back a lot of, like, we you know, pair plus draw on the turn. And obviously some flush draws as well, especially on an eighth turn. Definitely want to be checking back a decent amount of the time there to realize equity. Um, king, queen here just going to fold. King, queen just going to fold. 9-2 folding. Not going to open the 6-4 either. Going to open the ace-jack though. Got three bets. Obviously just going to be folding now. Even if somebody call calls here. So it's going to fold. Open the ace jack again. 9 8 going to be falling here versus 3x. Yeah, it wouldn't be too difficult, guys, to figure out who the regs are in this pool. I don't know how many entries are in at the moment, but there might be 20 to 30 entries in this pool. Uh, folding the ace jack here versus 3 bet. Yeah, like, I, I, can, I can already spot like three or four regs here very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. Fold that 5-2. We're going to open this king-queen into two recreationals. I like that, guys, against recreationals here. Like, the thing, the big difference is here between a reg and a fish profile is, like, first a reg, I'm going to be overbetting the slot. First a fish, just going to be betting small with range. And I'm going to check back that turn now. Obviously, three betting the queens. And again, like that, guys, fish just make your lives easy at times. Three bet the king, or sorry, the queens. Getting like that, just mark these guys. Getting cold call called here again from a perceived recreational. Well, that is it. Obviously, this board is very, very good for our range. So I would be starting with a very, very small bet. A very, very small bet. 
And if somebody raids me on this board, guys, it's going to be extremely, extremely strong. Like, something like 4.4 here is more than enough to bet this flop. You do not need to bet this big multi-way, guys. At all, at all, at all. And the thing is, we get raised here at any point. We're going to call one, but as I said, guys, we just don't need to bet big on them boards when we have such a range advantage. It's the same thing if that was heads up as well. Like, you just don't need to bet, like, half pot or three quarters or 25 even. You can go smaller because that board is extremely, extremely good for your range. I'm right, going to three bet the S4 on table two. Uh, pretty high frequency check back on these board, guys. Um, reason for that being is that the big blind is meant to have a donkey range on this board texture in particular, but just going to be checking back this time. He does lead here. We're not going to be falling just yet with the two overs. It's an interesting spot here on a uh, table two, but we're just going to fold. Sorry, guys, I meant to call that. Meant to call that. Yeah, we're just going to fold there now. Just going to fold. I don't mind floating one with two overs, guys, having the king of diamonds as well. I've said this countless, countless times before in previous uh, playing explains, sweat sessions, on streams, all that jazz. Do not overfold versus probe, guys. Do not overfold versus probe, but especially in the uh, wider formations, button versus big blind, button versus cutoff, etc. Three button the says king, obviously. Again, like that, guys. We do not need to make this big. We can just make this 15 big blinds here in position. It's more than big enough. More than big enough. And like that, if the cutoff jams here, we're going to be calling. Still going to start with a bet here, guys. Still going to start with a bet here for small. Get called. Gonna check this back on the turn now. I think it's fair. We're still ahead of some hands here. He starts with a donk here. I imagine what happens in practice here and what people are actually doing this way is not going to be the same thing, but I am going to call here with the two overs, as I said, and I will follow through on a club river. And if he checks here, I might end up turning this into a bluff, I think. But if he jams here, we're just going to fold. Yeah, okay, mate, just make it very obvious you have a seven there. But yeah, call and turn there, guys. Obviously, a lot of rivers we can bluff. But once he uh, just jams his hand like that, I think it's just very, very obvious what he has again. This is what I'm saying, guys. People just play their hand like that instead of checking to me and let me decide what I want to do and base their decision on what I'm doing. That guy just probably hit the seven on the turn or had some overpair that wanted to just check there. Or sorry, just to donk like that. I'm not a fan of it. But, you know, again, everyone's going to play their own game, guys. I'm just, I'm just talking about what I'm thinking when I see that happening game. Checking down this ace queen, guys. No need to do anything else. And we do win. We do win. This hand to no four on this eight at eight snap tables is a, is very very buggy, extremely buggy. I mean, hand to no four is probably mostly quite buggy as well, to be fair. But um, I know when the, all the bugs and all the all the kind of minor fixes get done, um. It's this after is going to be the best in the market, guys, without a doubt. It's obviously still in beta at the moment. But very, very powerful software. It's good, it's good that you guys got to play and explain like this for 45 minutes where um, I'm being put in a lot of tough spots. But I'm staying composed, you know. But a lot of hands where it's just you can't really do much else. Try try and implement some exploits. Float here, float there. It's just not always going to work, guys. But as I said, it's good for you guys to see this as well. There's a lot of act, a lot of um, a lot of action spots where I've been on the wrong end of it. So it's good that you're. It's good that you guys are getting this play and explain. Uh, Ace Queen just calling here against this size and scheme. 
And if he bets here, guys, we're going to be Ray's getting this in on this board texture. Yeah, for sure, Ray's versus that size. And the thing is, as well, guys, mostly you want to have a bigger size in here, i.e. half pot, maybe two thirds. But either way, just Ray's getting this uh, ace queen in here on table two. Yeah, and that's 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 another thing people are probably going to be doing, guys, is betting range with for a small size on these stakes. If that's the case, guys, punish them with them raises with um certain parts of your range. You could even go as far as like doing it with like complete air if they're C betting way way too wide because if they're C betting way way too wide, man, they're not going to be able to defend. Uh, King nine here. I'm going to check back this time. It's a polar C-bet size on this board, guys. So King-9 of hearts might not fit into that category. It probably will at a frequency, but not on the RNG that I had just now. Uh, King-Jack checking. We're just going to be call calling here, guys. Again, it's going to be a relatively overbluff node on average. Maybe it, maybe not as overbluff, let's say, under the gun versus big blind, but for sure still going to be um, call calling here, without a doubt. And once he checks here, I'm just going to go for a half-pot bet. Just going to go for a half-pot bet and probably fold to a raise realistically. Again, like that, guys, massive overfold in this node. But either way, he probably just had some weird, like, queen-jack with the queen of clubs or something like that. We'll find out in a moment. He'd ace-jack. Yeah, that's a very bad bet on the turn, in my opinion. No need to bet that on the turn. You can go for a small size and don't go for three quarters. And that's what I'm saying, guys. People just think that, like, when somebody checks back that flop, they never have a hand. And that's inexperience in not knowing what the range looks like there. Uh, gonna be folding here versus the big blind three bet, who's a Again, a recreational, no doubt. That's another 13 or 14 minutes, guys. We'll finish up the recording. Uh, King 3 going to be a fold. And A3 going to be a fold also. Fold the S5. Open that King-Queen. Fold that there too. Flop well. Again, as I said, guys, usually when you kind of see someone call call up on the small blinds, you can nearly, as a default, classify them as a weaker player. I'm not going to say they're the fish, but definitely a potential weaker player. As a default is what I mean. Of course, there will be some people that might have that might be playing this kind of call calling range from the small blind and might be playing it well. That's fine. As I said, as a default, if somebody's call calling from the small blind, probably put them in that category of a weaker player at least. I uh, got a three bet this eight as well this time. I'll have to call a four bet if that does happen as well, but it didn't. It did not. And like that, nines is going to be a mixed call raise here in these formations, but probably mostly just calling against this size. And, and we are a little bit deeper too. So we're just going to call. 6-5, uh, normally I would be 3-betting against the perceived recreational, but when he makes it 4x, I'm just going to call this time. And again, like that, I'd normally have a donk in range here. This is a very, very nice hand to donk, but against the recreational, I'm not going to do that. 9s here, just going to be falling versus half pot, guys, in the formations. So he starts with a 2 third size in here. I think we only call. I don't see any reason to do anything else, so we're just going to call. King 3 here, we're going to defend as well versus 3x and we might float winning position here we'll see and I'm going to call one more against this profile going to call one more versus this profile but I assume this is going to be relatively under bluff by the river on this board texture as I said checking behind the king 3 this time and he has ace 8 that's fair enough ace 8 that's fair enough I'm going to try to start bluffing this uh, king 3 now just going to go for a half pot, maybe three quarters on the river. And he does call. Still going to be betting half pot on the river here, guys. Or I might go like pot size or something like that. I think that's fair as well. Again, like that, guys, I'm going to have 9x here in this node. I'm going to have some check back flush draws, stuff like that. So I'm going to try and bluff the king three. We take it down. I'm going to open the 10-8. The fold of S4. Okay, 
called by the small blind again guys and that's again definitely a recreational no doubt so just going to start with a small bet with range here that's what we're going to do and if you raise this here guys i'm probably just going to get this in with the 10 of clubs against the stack size more or less what i'm going to do i guess but we take it down Ten more minutes, so guys. Ten more minutes. Uh, AS2 is gonna be fall versus two point five. Could be opening this king tree in the cutoff too. Opening that king tree in the cutoff to fold the A7 versus 3x. I fold this jacket. No. Fold the five seven. Open the eights. I will be opening this jack five two. I'll be falling to at three bets. Fold the ten six. Fold the king queen. Fold the king four. Don't know how many interesting spots there's been. I say there's been a few. I mean, again, I'm just kind of just clicking the record button, guys. Whatever comes up, comes up. I said, I, st I still think there was a decent amount of spots that you guys can um, maybe take notes on. I'm not quite sure. Again, I'm not sure why this guy is opening 4x here. Going to make it like 14 here as a 3-bet size, and I think that's absolutely fine. And if he jams, we're going to fold, obviously, guys. Um, Obviously, we flop quite well here. If this is a perceived recreational, then we know what to do in this spot here with the ace-queen, so we're just going to start with a small bet. And ace-7 on this table here. Uh, I think I like betting, so I'm going to go for an overbet. Just checking the ace-queen here on the turn. And unfortunately, he does not bet. I do think block bet is the only size in here on this river. So we're going to block bet the ace-queen. We get raised here at extremely, extremely easy fold. If you want a very general heuristic, guys, if somebody ever raised an overbet when you bet polar on this flop, fold your fucking entire range. Okay, maybe not literally, but you get my point. Super, super on the bluff spot there. Super on the bluff spot when they raise the when they uh, raise an overbet on the flop. I mean, in general, even when anybody raises an overbet, guys, it's going to be very, very on the bluff as a whole. I would say. Open the ace nine. King is just gonna fold. Fold the ace nine. And Queen Jack are obviously gonna be opening. Open the king nine. Take it down. Fold that 410. Knock this guy here too. Open up the A7. Fold that A6. Um, going to start with a bet here with the A7 this time. Going to start with a bet with the A7 and take it down. A9 will be opening the cutoff too. Again like that guys, mark the recreationals. It's, it's a two second job guys to do it. 
And them, them labels will stay there for literally the entire of the... Uh, all the time, basically. The labels are not going to go anywhere. Well, they shouldn't. Although I've had issue with 8 8 before with the, with the labels going MIA somehow. Going to open the jack 10 this time. Under the gun. Low frequency open. Take it down. Fold the jack 2. Queen Queen, we're going to be opening here also. If you get three bet, there's going to be folding there now. Maybe I could have waited to see if somebody did call call, but again, like that, even multi way King Queen is not going to play that well most of the time. This, this must be a, a new meta, guys, with the 4x open, is it? On 25 and L. It's a new thing I'm seeing. Make it 4x in uh, early formations when there's five players to get through. Don't think that's a good play, guys. <laughs> King 9 opening, Queen 9 opening. Take it down. And take it down as well. Nine's opening. Okay. This is interesting because I think this guy could be perceived recreational, guys. So if that's the case, I want to hammer home this hand for a big size on the flop because he's going to continue any gut shots. He's going to continue any ASX, etc. But unfortunately, we don't get action. That still does shouldn't deter us from doing that, guys. Again, like that, I haven't bottom set on that texture, guys. We unblock so much the continuing range. We unblock all the ASX. We unblock all the Jack X. We unblock all the draws. You know, it's just a really, really nice hand to go crazy with there. And Thierry will do that with third pair hands anyways, usually. Especially in the informations. Uh, just folding the S2 here as well, versus 2.5. This guy's got a big decision in the small blind, guys. But he does find, he does find the fold. He does find the fold. Okay, another two or three minutes, guys, we'll finish up then, okay? Fold the F4. Not going to be uh, three bet nines this time. Not going to be three bet nines this time. It's three folds. Three fold there as well. Obviously, open the king eight here in the small blind. As I said, if this guy is a recreational, then we'll be opening relatively wider than king eight. I can guarantee you that much. Open the s5. Take it down. Uh, just going to be called the queen nine here. I think this might be a low frequency three bet here, but just call in there, obviously, on a high roll. So we call. I might be tempted to float one here in position or out of position, but this board text are probably ill advised. I don't mind overcalling this for one. We can bluff some rivers. Uh, checking back to Jack 5 this time. And obviously, turn this into a bluff now. And fall in there now on the turn. Just going to go small and then pot the river. Just call. And again, I, I'm going to try and pot this river, guys. I don't expect this to work every time, but I can't win with jack five, and I'm always going to bluff these, so it is what it is. Uh, if he leads this river, obviously we're going to fold. We're going to start with a check here on table two. As I said, I'm just going to pot this river, guys. Try and get some folds. Good luck, us. It is what it is. And we face a bet here with the 10-8. We're just going to be check calling, guys. Um, I like his sizing on this flop for what it's worth, but either, either way, just going to be calling. We do take it down on table one. And he goes for another three-quarter size in here. Again, guys, very, very standard call. In saying that, if he bets again on the river here, it's going to be a very easy fall because the sizing scheme is going to be under bluff by the river. So we just have a very easy call again. And like that, guys, we're just going to be check falling the river, as I said. Just going to be check falling the river, as I said, falling this 9-8 as well. Yeah, 
just going to fold there now. Just going to fold there. Of course, this uh, auto topple function works when it wants to work. But yeah, we're going to sit out next big blind, guys, and we're going to leave it at that for today. So whenever this does decide to sit out. Open the S9 here. Fold the 10-9. Okay, we're sitting out there. Fold that here. Pfizer will be opening in the cutoff. We got three bet here. We're going to be calling this three bet sizing as well. Not 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 many parts of my range I'm going to fold here versus this uh, slightly well four X sizing more or less. Anyways, calling. I'm going to float one in position here versus like a thirty percent sizing or something like that. He decides to check here. If this is a recreational, then I definitely prefer checking back. Definitely prefer checking back here. He starts with a small bet here. Again, this might not be so indicative of a recreational to do this, but again, I'm not going to be falling fives here, guys. Not going to be falling fives. Very tempted to turn this into a bluff, to be honest. I think I'm going to try and turn this into a bluff. I think I'm going to try and turn this into a bluff. On table two here. When he picks this size in. Yeah. Nice one to finish on, guys, I guess. Nice one to finish on. Okay. Um, yeah, as I said, guys... Stars was down today, decided to play some 25 and L Zoom on an 8 at 8. It's nice to have that alternative as well. Um, as always, guys, if you have any constructive feedback, criticism, anything like that, please don't hesitate to drop anything in the comments below. I am always I always take on board any of the uh, feedback I get back. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.